Okay, so these videos are about wide neural networks. So in a neural network, the input and the output dimension might be fixed by your problem, but you can make the hidden layers, you can make those as wide or as narrow as you want. And what these wide neural networks are all about is what happens if you make them very, very wide. So in the limit that the width of the hidden layers goes to infinity, can we say something about the network? And the punchline is that yes, and the following is true. Wide neural networks, they are simple. What do I mean by they're simple? I mean, they're approximately the same as a linear feature regression model. So the feature regression model is something that you can do. It's sort of like a first year stats type of model. And the only hiccup is it's not just any feature regression model, it's a random feature regression model. And the randomness comes from the initialization of the network. So uh, wide neural networks behave like a linear random feature uh, regression model. So the, before we even dive into what how the neural networks behave and what they do, it is worth your time to understand what this thing is, uh, a random feature regression model. So the first little bit I've done in these notes is about that, the, the feature regression model. And I have some videos. The videos are more just me waving my hands and talking about things. Um, but the notes I, I wrote, I think, are, are more readable. So if you're ever confused about what's going on in these videos, you should go to the notes. Uh, the notes start with a nice table of all the notations. So if I'm doing a notation, you don't understand what it is, uh, you should check there. Um, uh, and, you know, they should be mostly mathematically complete with all their details and stuff. So you should think of the videos as sort of like icing on top of the notes uh, rather than trying to watch the videos uh, without um, knowing about the notes. So that's important. Um, let me tell you the, the high level overview. So the main result. So the main result of this feature regression. Uh, the main thing is that the whole problem can be boiled down to one object called the kernel. So there's this kernel k of x, x prime. And the kernel k, it does two things at the same time. So kernel k, one thing it does is it uh, drives training dynamics. And it also uh, specifies the initialization. So for the feature regression model, there's this kernel K, and it both drives the training dynamics of the model, and it controls the initialization of the model. And by you know going down the rabbit hole of chasing down this K and seeing where it comes from, um, you, I think you'll really be able to understand in what sense this model is, quote, fully understood. So that's the linear feature regression model. And when you make a random feature regression model, it turns out the kernel K can be understood. So even if the original model has a lot of randomness, uh, the kernel K somehow settles down and so you can see in that sense uh, why a random feature regression model is nice. Um, so that's what is going on in these notes. Uh, and there's details on, on these things. The first video is just telling you the main results. Uh, that's the most important thing. Then there's a video with remarks and applications um, and like showing some of these things like the double descent curve. And finally, there's a video on proofs. I think the proofs are nice. So you can see like what uh, are the features of this model that make it possible to solve. Um, so that's worth I think looking at if you're into doing research and things, if you just want to see the high level, maybe you don't care about the proofs. Um, so definitely check out those, those videos and uh, these notes, and hopefully uh, there you get something out of it.